Hello friends, welcome to my channel, my Silparag Jambulkar. In last video, we have seen what is exception. Also, we have seen how exceptions are handled or thrown by Apex programming language automatically. So, we have seen these examples. Also, we have seen how exception can be thrown manually. So, to throw any exception manually, we have to take help of keyword throw. And here, we are creating object of that exception class like this. In this video, we will see how to use try, catch and finally keywords. So, I am erasing this code. Here, I have added one statement. Here, I am creating one variable result. And suppose I am initializing it with this. So, I am dividing 10 by 0. After that, I am adding one more statement. So, here I am printing after exception. So, see, this is a statement where we can get exception. Before this, I am printing before exception and after this statement, I am printing after exception. Now see, so we will execute this code. So see, when I am executing this code, we are getting exception, right? We are getting mat exception divided by 0. But because of this exception, we are not getting result of remaining statements. Our whole execution is getting stopped, right? It is getting halted. If we don't want this, if we want this exception should get handled manually, and we should get output of remaining statement so that we can do by using try and catch block. So see, here what we will do. Here I am writing keyword try, opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket here we will mention like this. Now see, so by this what we are doing here statement where we can get exception that we have mentioned in try block, right. Now see. If exception get generated, so to handle this exception, we have to write catch block like this. This will be the catch block. Here we will mention curly brackets like this. And see, here we have to add one parameter. Now see what kind of exception can be generated? Math exception, right? Math exception. So here we will create object of math exception like this. And here we will add one statement. So see. Here, I am printing message and that message will be what kind of exception that we are getting like this. So, that object here I am printing. Now, see. So, this is a statement where we can get exception that we have mentioned in try block. To handle this exception, we have catch block, right? So, in this statement, exception can be generated and if exception is generated, exception is thrown. So, control will come to catch block. Here, we will write code to handle that exception. Now, see. We will execute this code, debug only. So here you can see, see in previous case, when we have not written try block and catch block, so in that case, whole execution was stopped, right? Whole execution was halted. But in this case, here see, here exception is handled. Whatever was before exception, that output also we got. And whatever the statements are there after this exception statement, that statement is also executed, right? So, before exception, this, after exception, this, and here exception is handled. And that is the advantage of using try and catch block. When we are handling exception from our side, so whole program will run smoothly. Where exception we are getting, so that exception statement also we will get. And whatever the remaining statements are there, that output also we will get. So, that is the advantage of using try and catch block. Now, see. So, here we have handled math exception. But suppose, in this block, suppose there is chance of getting DML exception. Suppose there is chance of getting null pointer exception. So, how to handle this different kind of exception? So, see. What we can do? Instead of having one catch block, we can have multiple catch block like this. Suppose here I am mentioning null pointer exception. We will add one more catch block. Suppose here we will mention DML exception. Now see, for this type block, we have this three types of catch block. We can mention any number of catch block. There is no restriction. So see, we have written like this, right? Now see whatever the type of exception based on that particular catch block will get run. See, we will execute this. Debug only. And here you can see whatever the catch block, whatever the parameter in that catch block is matching with that exception, that particular catch block will get run like this. Now see, 
suppose if we are not sure what kind of exception can be thrown from this try block so what we can do we can use super class of all the exception classes so exception here you can do see here we will mention exception is a class and it is super class of all the exception classes so suppose if you are not sure what kind of exception is generated so we can use this super class like this see i am executing this debug only and whatever the output is there that output we will get so see this catch block will be the default catch block if this exception is not matching with this exception classes in that case this will be the default catch block now see there is one more finally keyword or we can say it is a finally block now what is the use of finally block see we are writing finally block like this opening curly bracket and closing curly bracket and in between this block we will add one statement so in this case what we are doing here we are mentioning one statement in finally block now see some statements that we want to execute after try block so that statements we can mention in finally block now what is the use of this finally block if exception is generated in that case also finally block is running if exception is not generated in that case also finally block is running and that is the advantage of finally block means whether there is exception or not in both the cases finally block will get run so if some statements we want to execute if you want to free some resources so that thing we can do in finally block now see so definitely in this case exception will get thrown right now see we will execute this debug only so here you can see see here exception is generated before exception here after exception before that we have written finally block right so that finally block is executed here right now see in this case exception was generated exception was thrown now see suppose exception is not thrown so instead of 0 here i am making 2 now see we will execute debug only so see no exception is thrown in that case also this finally block is run finally block is executed and that is the advantage of finally block if exception is thrown or not in both the cases finally block is run if we want to free some resources so that thing we can do in finally block that is the advantage of finally block so in this way we can use try keyword to mention try block we can use catch keyword to handle that exception and finally keyword to write finally block in next video we will see how to use exception methods so friends i hope you like this video if as yes, click on like subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press bell icon so that you will get notification of my next video so stay connected thank you